suffrages for this evening of Holy Tuesday begin on page 328 of Evangelical Lutheran Worship. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. We continue to hear from Martin Luther's Meditation on Christ's Passion, from the year 1519. He who is so hard-hearted and callous as not to be terrified by Christ's passion and led to a knowledge of self has reason to fear, for it is inevitable, whether in this life or in hell, that you will have to become conformable to Christ's image and suffering. At the very least, you will sink into this terror in the hour of death and in purgatory, and will tremble and quake and feel all that Christ suffered on the cross. Since it is horrible to lie waiting on your deathbed, you should pray God to soften your heart and let you now ponder Christ's passion with profit to you. Unless God inspires our heart, it is impossible for us of ourselves to meditate thoroughly on Christ's passion. No meditation or any other doctrine is granted to you that you might be boldly inspired by your own will to accomplish this. You must first seek God's grace and ask that it be accomplished by his grace and not by your own power. That is why the people we referred to above fail to view Christ's passion aright. They do not seek God's help for this, but look to their own ability to devise their own means of accomplishing this. They deal with the matter in a completely human, but also unfruitful way. We say without hesitation that he who contemplates God's sufferings for a day, an hour, yes, only a quarter of an hour, does better than to fast a whole year, pray a psalm daily, yes, better than to hear a hundred masses. This meditation changes man's being and, almost like baptism, gives him a new birth. Here the passion of Christ performs its natural and noble work, strangling the old Adam and banishing all joy, delight, and confidence which man could derive from other creatures, even as Christ was forsaken by all, even by God. Two points are important to emphasize here. First, that the meditation on Christ's passion rests in a transformation worked in our perceptions of ourselves and who we are. 
And this is not worked out of guilt for Christ. This is worked rather out of realization of what actually happened on the cross. Luther is not trying to terrify us. Luther is trying to make us understand that what happened on the cross did happen whether we appreciate it or not. And it's a much more horrible fate to persist in pretending it didn't than it is to acknowledge it. But Luther also remembers and says here that this change, this true meditation on the passion is not a work of human will, and we can't ritualize it or make it happen. We must pray that God will soften our hearts and give us God's grace, God's mercy, God's love, that the Holy Spirit will descend upon us so that we may meditate truly on Christ's passion. And that gift, the gift that this cross is truly by us and in a sense for us, that we have crucified Christ and therefore we are those whom he came to save, namely his murderers. That is a gift of faith. And so we pray for that to descend upon us from on high. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Jesus, our Lord and our God, you bore our sins in your own body on the tree so that we, being dead to sin, might live unto righteousness. Have mercy upon us now and at the hour of our death, and grant to us, your servants, with all others who devoutly remember your blessed passion, a holy and peaceful life in this world and, through your grace, eternal glory and the life to come, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, God forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, you have called us to follow you. Grant that our love may not grow cold in your service, and that we may not fail or deny you in the time of trouble. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us today. We ask you to forgive us all our sins where we have done wrong, and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.